Hello. Hello. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm here with Angie and Ken. Yay. Nice to see you. Otherwise known as Huck and Lily. Yes. Is that yeah. your alter egos? Yes. Mm -hmm. It is now. It is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I have so much I want to talk about, but I want to kind of start with that. You guys have just released a children's album called Huck and Lily. There's a tree growing in my room. Tell me about that. How did you guys come up with this idea to do a children's album? Where did Huck and Lily come from? And break it down for me with your bad selves. All right. So the first song we ever wrote was called The Filler Crab. And we were sitting down at Seaside on the beach. We had a pizza. We got a bottle of rosé. And we're sitting there. And um, we we're just going to watch the sunset. And I saw all these little filler crab things walk by. And I never saw one in my life. Cause and she I'm, climbed up on top of my head. Yeah. I screamed. Because <laughs> I'm from Canada and we don't have those up there. And so I was like, oh my gosh, what are those? And Ken's like, they're fiddle crabs. And I said, why do they call them fiddle crabs? And he goes, I don't know, they don't play the fiddle. And then right then we started a, the we had chorus. We got a little ukulele with us. We and just, yeah. We just wrote this song. We just wrote it right then and there. And then we went in the studio and recorded it mm -hmm. with our buddy Skid Mills, who's a, oh. a great producer in town, Grammy winning producer, and sort of. Uh, put this track together and I turned it I turned it into my publisher and they were kind of looking at me like what in the world we're we gonna do with this what did, what the fiddler grab he don't play the fiddle song but anyway we went and wrote <coughs> wrote a whole bunch more kind of as just a side project for fun yeah and then we ended up uh, getting a record deal with it with a company called first note no way and we're about to take off on our first tour this summer do about 75 80 shows up and down the coast is this record label focused on children's music yeah and what, what? We, what we set out to do is, uh, you well, know. Well, they do other music, too. Yeah, we, we do other music, for sure. But this record is for children, and the, we say it's for kids and the grown-ups who love them. Because my, my kids are older now, but there was a time where it was constantly the Wiggles and Barney and all that, which is great for the, for kids, but it kind of, you know, some of that can drive the parents crazy after a while. Totally. So we set out to make a record where... Uh, that the kids would love, but that maybe after you dropped them off at school that you still listen to it on the way home. <laughs> and I have to say, I listened to the whole album, and it's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Are you guys the new Raffi? Oh, at least to love Raffi. Yeah. I don't know about that. I yeah, mean, I'd love to be the new Raffi. I mean, seriously, there's <laughs> not like a huge children's personality singer in the market right now, is there? Well, I, there are different there are different groups that are out there, you know, doing shows and all, TV shows and all that kind of thing. And so, um, we've looked into some doing some of that kind of thing and see what's out there. We're going to hit the road first. So where are you guys it. hitting the road? We will be up and down the coast. Um, we'll be up and down the coast all summer playing for small theaters. We're playing the Seaside Amphitheater every week in Seaside, Florida. Nice Seaside. And, okay, well, by the time this airs. Yeah. It ha will have ended. Yeah. Nice. So because we just rocked the Seaside Amphitheater. <laughs> you just all rocked summer. it. Just rocked it. <laughs> Sold it out. <laughs> but we'll be back probably screaming. next year, hopefully, if, if um, it all goes well. Heck yeah. And aren't you guys living in like an Airstream or something? No, we actually got an old Florida cottage down there and we've renovated it. We and, were going to uh, do the Airstream, but then we figured it'd be a lot of work and yeah. really we hot. We found a cool little spot on the, on the lake and the beach down there and we've renovated it and we're uh, kind of be based there. And, Rolling up and down the, on the beach playing music for the kids. Heck yeah! Yay. So where can people buy Huck and Lily? Lily, they can go to our website, huckandlily.com, yeah, mm -hmm. and or iTunes, or iTunes. We're mm -hmm. on iTunes as well, and find everything there. And here in Nashville, if you're in Nashville, you can get the CD at White's Mercantile. Okay. Uh, which is really Holly Williams' awesome store. And the you Plaid can Rabbit. Go to the Plaid Rabbit. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and there's different other places in town that that have it, but um. At least buy one million copies today. <laughs> buy one million copies. Let's make this thing go platinum. <laughs> yeah. We could give you a, a bulk deal. Yeah. Buy a million and we'll sell it to you for what? Half price? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So aside from Huck and Lily, which is amazing, and I'm gonna like break that down here in a little bit. I'm gonna get dissect the album a little more. But besides that, you guys have a lot else going on. You guys are songwriters in your own right. Mm -hmm. And your stars on the I Love Kelly Pickler show <laughs> on CMT. Yeah, How does it feel fun. to be a reality star? Oh gosh! Oh, I never thought about it like that. <laughs> it's so uh, it doesn't feel like we're doing a reality show because we're just um, it's because it's real. <laughs> it is real, right? Sometimes it gets a little <laughs> too real. You know, what like some of the most real moments. 
Oh, I, I remember when we were filming and the cameras were there, but they were like, they're like ninja cameras. They're like, you don't even know they're there anymore. And we were just at the supper club. <coughs> we were having our <coughs> supper club party. And oh, and that's called Hillbilly Supper Club. Hillbilly Supper Club. That's a regular thing. Yeah, which Ken is, is a big cook on the show. And so we were just sitting there and we were just talking away. And I, I think I said something that I wouldn't normally say if it wasn't just between friends. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're being filmed. I forgot. And 2.5 million people are watching it every episode. It's the yeah. highest ranking show on CMT since 2012, I think. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're not just between friends. Right. <laughs> There's but some really cool you forget. people in the cast, too. Like, like you. Like you. Yeah. Oh, stop. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Which I'm so excited about because um, we, we get to spend the day tomorrow together. I know. I cannot believe we're wrapping up this season I know. tomorrow. Season two. So yeah. by the time this airs, I'm going to air this in conjunction, and I want to talk about this. You guys did an episode on the I Love Kelly Pickler show mm-hmm. with a very special guest, the Fiddler Crab. Yay! <laughs> and you went to the Children's Hospital. Tell me what that was about. <clears throat> oh, that was amazing. I've never done that before. Ken has before, but yeah, Ryan Seacrest has studios there. He has like 10 across the whole nation for just children's hospitals, and it was just amazing to see the kids that could come. They all get you know walk in wheeled in and then um the ones that can't make it to the actual radio show they get to watch in their room on and they can ask questions TV. it's interactive it was awesome oh, cool. yeah so nobody's left out and everybody gets to see and so we went with kelly and kyle and they sang sugar cookies and the fiddler crab or no the porcupine. I sat on a porcupine, which is... I sat on a porcupine. <laughs> yeah. And Kelly sang, the, did the rap for us. Yeah. So we got to do it with them, which was so the special. Kids love it? Oh, I, I hope so. I think so, yeah. They it loved it. It was a special day for them and their yeah. families. And it, I think it just gives, you know, anytime any, anybody could go over there and, and play music or do something like that, it's, it was so rewarding for us. But it just gives them a break from... Mm. All the same old hospital stuff. Yeah. And lets mm-hmm. them just go be kids for a little while. Then it gives their families a chance to see them tomorrow and be happy. And it was neat. Mm-hmm. It, it was a, uh, it was a big, it had a big impact on all of us. I think. I think that's amazing. the thing when you go do hospital visits. You you go because you want to do something kind, but you end up leaving. Okay. If you hear moaning in the background, <laughs> it's these chickens. It's the chickens. <laughs> we are uh, in the kin and Annie's backyard, and they have a chicken coop with three chickens. And they are, like, talking to us. So if you do hear random moans, it's a chicken. Mm-hmm. I used to be in a band called The Random Moans. <laughs> <laughs> and then he started, he said, no, we're going to do a children's album. Yeah, yeah. no, we'll do a children's album. We'll do like a 180 Dead. degree difference. Too close to the real moans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But no, when yeah. you go to a hospital, you end up, you end up benefiting because it's yeah. such an amazing experience mm-hmm. to see the strength of these kids and these families, mm-hmm. I feel like, who are going through these serious diseases. And yeah. you, you hear people talk about it and stuff and say, oh, it's a good thing to do. And then you really go there, it's, re- it's really real. Yeah. And there was this one little girl who had surgery the day <clears throat> before. You can still see her little stitches. and Staples sh- she, all the way around her head. Yeah, but she was so strong in... Kelly sang Red High Heels and invited her to sing, and she came up and sang it with her, and it was just so wonderful. Oh, that man. Yeah. That's that awesome. So yeah. And when y'all went to the hospital, though, y'all brought a guest yeah. star, yeah. which <clears throat> I'm going to introduce later in this interview. Don't let him hear, but he's not real. He's a puppet. Don't <laughs> he thinks tell he's him real. that he's real. Yeah, don't, don't tell him. Feel the fiddler crap. He's, he's not, not alive, but he will be upset if he hears that. Yeah, we're not going to talk Tell me about Phil. It's not <laughs> hard. It's crap. not hard to get him to come out of his shell. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but he's uh, Phil. Phil is a, uh, you know, maybe not handling his newfound celebrity well all the time. Sometimes he gets a little bit all about Phil. He's got a little ego problem. <laughs> yeah. A little bit, and then he also he has a tendency to, to stretch the truth a little bit. Oh, he's Some a little bit of a white he's got a liar. A little bit of insecurity, so he'll like mm. he he may tell you if you talk about a band or something, he may tell you that he was the fiddle player for them, or oh. that Hootie and the Blowfish used to be Hootie, Hootie and the uh, Fiddler Crabs. Or <laughs> oh, so he just he, he creates stories in his mind that he mm. thinks are real. Yeah. yeah, he does. And we won't tell him. No, 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 because it doesn't hurt anybody. And he carries around the fiddle and doesn't really play the fiddle. Yeah, I was gonna ask about yeah. that. He and doesn't he, play the fiddle. He'll skirt the issue if you ask him. To, he'll tell you all about all his tours and things and stuff, but he he will always kind of skirt it. 
Well, and that's probably a little bit like embarrassing for him because when you are called a fiddler crab, but yet you can't play the fiddle. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. I mean, who came up with it? I know. And in that <laughs> song, Fiddler Crab, but he can't play the fiddler. Y'all kind of break down some other animals that are not living up to their names too. Mm-hmm. So, what other ones aren't like the snow crab has never seen snow or we something? We have the uh, the horseshoe crab. He don't play no horseshoes. He doesn't play no horseshoes. And the the snow crab has never seen the snow. And the king crab is not exactly royalty because he sits under a rock and not on a throne. And then we went, it, you know, in the song we talk about how we went to talk to the hermit crab to get some answers, but he's just keep to himself. <laughs> then we talked to the blue crab, but he was too sad for comment. Oh! Then we tried to talk to the stone crab, but he was just sort of out of it. Out of it. <laughs> he was out of it. <laughs> but it's true. The starfish is the star. The sand shark's always sitting at the sandbar. And the jellyfish, make no bones about it. He is who he is, and you never have to doubt it. But the fiddle crab, <laughs> he doesn't play the fiddle. Ah. Okay, that's a clever song. Uh, <laughs> right? Well, thank you. I love that. Uh, we couldn't get it cut in the mainstream country market, right. so we had to go out there and see what Remember when I turned that one into my publisher, and he's like, what am I going to do with this? So you guys are also full-time songwriters. Yep. Let's talk yeah. about that. Y'all like live the dream. Aww. That's the dream, right? Yeah, we're yeah. trying. Yeah. Um, we've been very blessed, very fortunate. Tell me about what it's like to get to be a songwriter and do your love every day. Go ahead. You know, we were talking about that last night. I had a show last night with uh, Billy Montana and Kyle Jacobs, who are both great songwriters in town. And we were kind of we were having dinner together. And we were just kind of pinching ourselves, like. I can't believe that we get to do this and that yeah it's one thing if we can make a living out of it is amazing it's like if we had a lot of money anyway we'd spend the money just just to get to do this yeah <laughs> and it, it's it's is a, I, you know i think it's a uh i think it's a really cool thing and i feel very blessed i have a friend who's a um named doug zip and he's 87 years old yeah Doug. he writes every day still and he's super healthy he was a professional writer in Nashville for 40 years. Wow. A long time ago. And he told me, he said, the reason I don't get sick and everything is because I'm writing songs and I do what I love. And he, you would think he's 65 years old. He's 87. I believe that. I think that, like, a, your mental health and translates into sometimes your physical health. You know, yeah. if you are happy and you're living a fulfilled life, mm-hmm. I think it radiates through, through your body, you know? And I think you mm-hmm. can live a healthier life. Yeah. I do love that about Nashville and this podcast in general focuses on people who follow their dreams Mm -hmm. because a lot of people won't take that won't take that risk they won't commit to like diving in and just following Mm -hmm. their hearts and living their dreams because they're too afraid so you end up working and doing a job you don't love but Mm -hmm. that's why I admire people like you guys who say you know screw it we're doing it like we're gonna just chase whatever's in our heart and see what happens and make it work yeah, I moved, be brave. I moved 3,000 miles. <laughs> from and, Canada? Yeah, from British Columbia. And so <coughs> when, when people complain, they're like, I moved so far. I'm like, where are you from? <laughs> Alabama. I'm like, okay. I'm cutting it But it's like, uh, it was a big commitment to do. But if, if I didn't, then I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. What made you want to move? Um, I think just, uh, just well, my brother passed away when I was young. And when when that happened, the whole world just opened up. Really, it so did. So instead of closing in, it yeah. opened up for you. It did. Like it, it, the little town I lived in, all of a sudden was, I have to leave. I have to go somewhere. I have to go and see what's out there. And it's such a short life, and I have to go and do what I love. And even if I'm just <coughs> eating spaghettios, I'm gonna do it anyway because I'll be happy Which doing it. Which we have done. Hey, yeah. spaghettios are good. Yeah. So it made <laughs> you realize that life is short. Right. Yeah. And that you gotta go do what you want to do exactly and I did a lot of jobs and and jobs I hated and I just can't live like that until I'm retired yeah <laughs> I know I agree so yeah. you just did it you moved to Nashville mm-hmm. and look at you now well it, it's like you have to you have to do things that can lead to other things if you know if, if that's what you want like if I knew if I worked at my dad's auto body shop I wouldn't have opportunities <laughs> to do things like um, Huck and Lily and the Kelly Pickler show and things like that. So, and songwriting and and there's no nobody to write with up there. Right. <laughs> so um, yeah. So it's I had to do it. And Ken, you were like a major professional person before, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you had like a real like serious job. Are you talking about my blue jean model and <laughs> Oh, yeah. you were that Calvin Klein model. <laughs> no, no. I Calvin knew Klein. I recognized your butt. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. Thank, I'm, that was my fault. I said no. that. Ken, Ken was definitely, he was like a real adult. What, what was a your, real adult. You, you were majorly adulting before you became a songwriter. Tell I was me about that. A stockbroker for Morgan okay. Stanley. That's like legit. For several years and in uh it was uh I he, loved it. I loved being a broker and I loved I loved the market and He didn't broker. have long hair. Oh you need mm-hmm. that hair. Your hair is like a flowing mane. <laughs> <laughs> I took all that dry cleaning money and started spending it on fine shampoos and conditioners. <laughs> now, so but, you were stockbroking. What made you like cut the cord and go songwriting? Well, um, I was actually, I was up here on business in Nashville, on business, seeing a client, and I had an evening um, where a, a friend of mine and said, I, would you want to go with me to this party? Um, and I'd played music my whole life. We had a band and did really well. But after college, we all kind of were like, you know, I've got to go get a real job and can't do music for a living and all that. So... I started doing this. I was up here seeing a client, and I I, got, I went to this party with a friend of mine, and um, he didn't know anybody at the party either, except for Scott Baggett, who's a producer here in town. It turned out to be the 2003 BMI Songwriter of the Year party that Windswept Publishing was having for Jeffrey Steele. How'd you so, get invited to that? He just <clears throat> Scott invited my friend who invited me. I didn't know anybody in the music business, but I really missed playing music and doing music. And So I went to this... I so you went grew to this, up playing music. Yeah, I was okay. the same band since I was in elementary school. We still play at least one show a year, or two, Heck yeah. every other year or something. But uh, anyway, I was there and I saw all these people having this amazing celebration uh, for Jeff and and for the music stuff. And I didn't really meet too many people more than briefly that night. And I remember leaving that party with a little bit of an ache. Because it heart. became real to you, like you realized that, oh my gosh, you can do this for your life. Yeah, and I, I remember driving back to my hotel and I was Your thinking, heart ached for real? It was hurting a little bit because I was like, that's that's what I was going to do my whole life. And, and tomorrow I'm going to this, in a meeting to, you know, to talk about um, a uh, investment plan. <laughs> you care less about it. Uh, you know, I mean, I cared about it. I enjoyed care. it, but I, it gave me a confidence that I needed to figure out that I could do anything. Once I got over the hump doing that, I figured I could do it. But anyway, I started writing songs and stuff and, and sending them in, submitting, and jumped to a year and a half or so later. I ended up signing a publishing deal with Windswept, the company whose party I went to. Oh, my God, I love stories like that. And ended up going to the studio and doing some recording with, with Jeffrey. Um, Steel? Mm-hmm. For, I mean, he cuts who, his sides You went with to me the windswept party. Yep. Celebrating Jeffrey Steele, who, if anyone doesn't know, listening, Jeffrey Steele has written a gaggle of huge <laughs> songs, yeah. hits well, on country radio. He has a huge heart, and he allowed a little bit of time for me to, as a, uh, you know, he was just, he taught me a lot, and was, I look at it as a, a, t- a big learning time for me, just kind of watching him, and he was nice enough to make a little time for me. Um, but, um, the other thing that was there, Cliff Aldrich was the publisher there, and Steve Marklin, who are who are like brothers to me now, and Big Al Anderson was there celebrating, who I've now written a hundred songs with, who's one of my closest oh my friends, gosh. and um, it was just I think about that night, and it's like still, and it's, I remember it vividly. What if and you I'm didn't very go? Grateful I was going to say, what if you wouldn't, and what if you wouldn't have taken the plunge to like pursue this? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like every that's the thing that blows my mind is a moment changed everything you know like everything changed mm-hmm. in one decision mm-hmm. and what if you would have just thought I, I can't do it like it's not for me it's too hard mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. and you took a lot of risk because you moved from Birmingham and mm-hmm. and you had such a good job that you worked really hard to get and I feel like a lot of people are super scared to give up a good job yeah to chase a, a dream mm-hmm. like this songwriting yeah. sure because stability is nice <laughs> yeah well it's made all the difference and ha- I mean happy I remember such a big pay cut that first year too now, but I remember that I ne- never felt happier or more on the right track and if there's one thing it made all the difference in my life and if there's one and a lot of my friends have a similar mm-hmm. story but if there's one thing that like I could leave for my children is or teach my children is to do that is to like you said take a plunge that you're not afraid of and listen to your soul like your soul tells you what to do mm-hmm. i feel like you, everyone has a different path too so mm-hmm. you really have to like tune into it yeah which is so not trendy sometimes in our culture mm-hmm. well it's like you too you know you're in bands and singing and you you were on the other side where you were doing the a and r yeah and then your heart was just pulled to do this because this is what you love yeah 
and you could have done those other things, but but you love doing this. I think that to be, and tell me if y'all agree with this, that's one of the coolest things about the collection of people that we have in Nashville and the people that live mm-hmm. here is it's not a, for, for me, of course we all want success and money and mm-hmm. that would be awesome, but once you truly like start walking down your soul path, Mm-hmm. It doesn't even matter because, like you were saying, you get to do it. You know, you yeah. would spend your money yeah. trying to get to do this. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. If, if that was the way it worked, and you would. If we had more money, we just would spend more of it, and it would be <laughs> the same place. And it's not just writing songs. It's just it's being able, being blessed to be a part of a community that builds each other up and supports each other. And everybody talks about the music, and there's plenty of cutthroat stuff too. But um, you probably agree with me that the uh, we have an amazing community of people here that really. When somebody does well, everybody cheers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. I know. I love that about Nashville because I think everybody gets whatever is meant to be yours is always going to be yours. So that is such a misconception, I feel like, of people wishing ill on other people. Like, mm. by someone else doing bad, that's not going to make you do better. No. And everyone sort of knows that in Nashville mm-hmm. and everyone roots for everyone. And Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's great people here and we're just so blessed to have such a great... Um, family of friends or we call our Nashville family and it's just mm-hmm. it's just wonderful okay so before I bring up my special guests is there anything else that the humans Ken and Andy would like to talk about because then we're gonna bring someone a little more crabby <laughs> out oh no I think that's good no you should, I think we whatever. covered thank, everything thank yeah thank you so much okay drum roll please we now have a special guest <coughs> joining us <coughs> I don't know if anyone has uh, interviewed someone quite this crabby. <laughs> <laughs> He's so Everyone. cute. He's darling. Hello. May I introduce the Fiddler Crab. <laughs> Hello. It's nice to see you. <laughs> well, hi. Introduce yourself, please. I am Phil the Fiddler Crab. Okay. And actually, Phil, your microphone's down there. But no, <laughs> not me. But just shoot your voice <clears throat> down there. I am Phil the Fiddler Crab. <laughs> So, you look so handsome, you don't even look a bit crabby. I'm actually a pretty nice guy. I go pretty easy going as crabs go. So, it looks to me like you're pretty attached to this fiddle, fiddle here. Oh, yeah, this is a major part of my, uh, this is my thing, you know. It's like a part of your body. Yeah, it's sort of an attachment of my soul. So, you must practice all the time. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I have to practice a lot. You do? I have to practice in private. You do? Yeah, it's a, big, a little shy when it comes to that. So, tell me what it's like being a celebrity, because you're on an album yes, called yes. Huck and Lily, yes. and you also ha- are you're on the Kelly Pickler show, I Love Kelly Pickler. Very busy schedule for my agents, very busy, man. You're very busy for a crab, and you're very busy for anyone, but especially a crab. You might be the most famous crab, besides Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. Oh. Sure, sure, yes. Yeah. Do you feel like you're competing with him? Not really, no. He's more like L.A. I talk to him. We kind of bounce ideas off each other stuff. You know, I'm at Nashville. He's L.A. I'm, we're both like, for him, you know, there's other crustaceans and sea creatures there because it's on the coast. But Nashville's kind of landlocked. And I find myself, you know, just sort of being alone in the business up here. And I got to kind of call and, you know, see what other other guys are doing in the business. So you're holding the fort down in Nashville. Sure, yes, yes. So what is I'm it, the one to call. What is it like being on an album? And tell me about yours. I want, I want you to sort of break down the album Huck, Huck and Lily. I want to talk about the songs. Tell me how you feel about the song Sugar Cookies. Are Sugar Cookies your favorite? I like Sugar Cookies. It's a really nice song. And it's when they, when they play the song in the Huck and Lily show, when we get the kids going, we tell them it's the jump song. Every time we play Sugar Cookies, the kids will start jumping up and down and going crazy. They like to see if kids are just jumping everywhere. It's just really having a nice time. Hey, you hear that bird in the tree? <laughs> yes. I hope it's not a hawk. Hawk. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't I mean, get you. Because, I mean, you're like hawk bait. Yeah. Hawk bait. <laughs> and you're bright red, so he can see you well, really that's well. all the time that we have for today. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to come to huckandlily.com and check us out. Come see me and Slow Mo Joe and some of the other guys. <laughs> Okay, we'll protect you. Okay, so we got sugar cookies, and then one of my personal favorites, I sat on a porcupine. I know you're nervous. Oh, sorry, excuse me. I know, it's, it's nerve-wracking. It could be a hawk, but we'll make sure you're okay. You know one thing that I like about I sat on the porcupine? Tell me about it. Well, Lily sings I sat on the porcupine, and she always asks the kids at the show before every time, 
How many people out there have ever sat on a porcupine? And you know what? There's always one kid that did this. Yep, there I've is. done that. There's always on one kid with his hand up saying, I did. Is he joking? <laughs> well, yeah, there's he's always got somebody. To be. Well, there's maybe always it happened. Somebody. It's true, there's always somebody. So apparently in every crowd. I said porcupine. <laughs> In every crowd, in every crowd, there's always one. There's yeah. always one. Yeah, every crowd. Okay, I thought that was like a myth. What's your personal favorite? I'm gonna guess that it is the fiddler crab. Well, I mean, let's face it. It was the thing that started it all. <laughs> That's what started this whole thing. Yeah, I was on the road at the time with Charlie Daniels. I didn't even know about it. Oh, you were. Yeah, yeah, I did love tour from my day, you know. You played fiddle with Charlie Daniels. He needed a fiddle player. Was that nerve-wracking to play with such a big legend? He was a little nerve-wracking. He, he is, uh, he is uh, on the bus. You know, it's kind of. I didn't want to get stepped on. It's a little crowd on there. He's right. got those big boots, you know. Oh right. yeah. Mm. So like when Devil <laughs> went down to Georgia. We well, went. Devil went down to Destin. Devil went down to Destin. Yeah, Devil went down to Destin. <laughs> he was looking for a shelter still. He was in a. He was in the barn and he was trying to make some deals. He was way behind. You know, you know the story. Do you have any other highlights from the album that you want to talk about? Well, I like a lot of songs on there. There's a really nice song on there about a, a bird. What's the name? What's the name of the? Uh, oh, thing? it's hard to live in a oh, zoo. Hard to live in a, that one's in a, a zoo. That film. one's a little more melancholy, isn't it? It's kind of like Jimmy Buffett style. Yeah. I like that one. It's a nice song about a parrot who falls off a ship and has to go to the zoo, and then his captain to come rescue him and he gets him back out at sea again. Okay, so it got a great Follow happy ending. Follow his dream. Very nice ending. It does have a happy ending. And then Phil, you like Slow Mo Joe, and, and yes, there's yes, um, a little Slow Mo Joe puppet that we're introducing too, and that Phil may have to share some interviews. To you, he's a puppet. To me, he's my roommate. Oh, right. Are you going to be jealous that you have to share your stage time, Phil? I don't have to share my stage time. He can stay back there and make lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Phil, he can't do that. He's going to come out and do a couple of some. Maybe just a couple. Okay, just a couple. You'll still be the star. Let's get real. Right. He will be. Yeah, um, that one's still be. It's probably going to be a big star this summer. You come out and see, you know, in the fall, too, all of them. Come to a town near you. Come into a town near you? Just, you know, it's road life for a crab. It's yes. a crab's life for me, Phil a crab. It is a crab's life. Phil a crab. You are so Phil, cute. could you sing a little song for us right now? Yeah. Caroline, she's the queen of talking. She's what's on your mind. <laughs> I really like that song. <laughs> I think I told you that. I wish I would have known you knew it. I would have asked you to sing the theme song for me. Oh, wow. Oh, you know, I really love to do that. I really would. You would? Yeah, but I was probably on the road, maybe with playing fiddle for the police. I used to play fiddle for the police. You played for the police, too? I got a couple of shows here and there when they need a fiddle player. And Charlie Daniels? Yep. Now, Phil, is that true? I don't remember you mentioning that before. Yeah, live well... I want to say, so to speak, like, it's not the same police you're thinking of. Oh, okay. I play for the police benefit at the police ball oh. <laughs> to raise money for the local police. Oh, that's nice of you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Phil, I want to know, what's your, what does your vision for your life look like for the next five years? Do, crab even, do crabs even live that long? Well, you really ask the sensitive questions, don't you? <laughs> you really thought this through about how it made me make me feel, but that's okay. I'm tired. I got really thick skin. I think crabs are really um, tough because it, if you lose a pincher, doesn't it just grow back? Yeah, it just grow back pretty good. Usually just a couple of days. A pincher grows back in a couple of days? Uh, sure, eating a good pincher if you're eating right. Are you eating right? What do you eat? Well, now I'm on the road, you know, I'm trying to, try to eat healthy, but it's hard on the road. You're always, every, every stop you go to is just, well, Wendy's or KFC or something. <laughs> You know, I don't like Captain D's, though. I don't like that at all. They have put <laughs> filler crab in the crab cakes. Okay, do you eat crab cakes? Never. Never? Never, ever, ever. <laughs> that would be really weird. That would be. But on, also on the album, there's a song called uh, Yumbo Gumbo, and it sounds like a bunch of your friends are in that suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, there's some mixing in some shrimp and scallops. I mean... There's um, a lot of stress in my life. Is there crabs in that gumbo also? Not filler crab. That's the good thing no. about being a filler crab is really nobody wants to eat you except for a hawk. <laughs> you know, I don't think there's a crab in that too. No, I don't think they it's put... It's just uh, shrimp, scallops, clams, and oysters. So they don't put any filler crabs in there, do they? No. Not a one. You're lucky. I am very fortunate. Yeah, so far, count your lucky stars. So but all you... these things are very stressful. That's why I like to just feel the wind blowing through my shell and take it one day at a time. <laughs> 
We should all live like that, though. Yeah. Chase your dreams. Even if you can only run sideways. You only can run <laughs> sideways? That's just the nature of a fiddler crap. <laughs> What's your five-year plan? To live. <laughs> to live. Day now, at the day. end of five years, I'd like to still be alive. Okay, I, that's a I'm good sure goal. I'm sure you will. I mean, maybe, like, you can make your debut on Oprah. Who's up with? Kelly Ripa's looking for a new co-host. Oh. Oh, Fiddler Crab and Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> That's that nice ring to it. It really sounds great. I like that. I don't know if I want to get up so early, though. Oh, I know. You need your sleep. You need your beauty rest. A lot of hair and makeup. Yeah, I, I need to keep, I have to wear sunscreen, I read a lot of things, and juice a lot. Yeah, you're already beat red. That's the only way I'm going to reach my five-year goal. Yeah, okay, well, at least you're planning ahead. <laughs> Okay, so Phil, before we wrap it up with you and I bring it on back to Ken and Andy, anything else you want to want to say? I like to I like to end my episodes with "Leave Your Light." So, can you give us some inspiration from the Fiddler Crab? Come on, Phil, tell us what you got. Don't be scared. Well, I think it's important to always help yourself by helping others. Break that down. You get what you give. You get me? Yeah. So I try to share my music and my good looks and my experience with everybody. <laughs> To bring light to their lives so they can shine like me. <laughs> That's really, really sweet of you, Phil. I'm, I think I'm very sweet, too. I like that about me, don't you? I, you know, I think that's one of my favorite things about you. Can we have a little kiss? Can we have a little kiss? Come over here with you. Bring it over here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just gave oh, me a 10 year no. plan instead of five years. I'm going to live longer now. Now his head's going to get really big. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining me, Phil. Thanks You've for having me. It's been a pleasure. Sorry, I don't have any more time. I have to go to another interview. You know how it is. I know. <laughs> Rocking I know. and rolling. It's tough. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. See you, dude. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm back here with Ken and Annie. See what Andy. I mean? Yeah, he's really great. Isn't he, darling? He is good. He's got, a, he's got some, some flaws, but overall, his heart's in the right place. Yeah. His heart's totally in the right place. I'd like to say he has a big heart, but he has a tiny heart, but it's, it's, a, it's a big tiny <laughs> but heart. But it's in proportion to his little crabby body. Yeah, a, <laughs> his heart is proportionate. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> to his little crabby body. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I see big things for oh the Fiddler God. Crab. That's hilarious. Well, it's, he's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. The kids like him. Wow. So, are y'all going to get introduce more puppets as the show goes on? Yeah, we have Slow Mo Joe coming. And, and he, what's he going to be like? He's a, he talks a little, he, like in the song, Slow Mo Joe, he's like, I'm five inches long and that tall too. So, I, I do the voices for him. He's a turtle that realized he was slow and yeah. he found a way to go fast. What's, how? And so, he says, so some of the lyrics say, Slow Mo Joe was a turtle with four little legs from his big heavy shell. He'd stick out his head and think to himself, what am I going to do? I'm five inches long and that tall too. He thought... All of the others are faster than me. All but the slug, who's slow as can be. And then one day... An epiphany. He climbed on the back of a water ski. And that's when Slow Mo Joe got his get up and go. Changed his name to Joe Turbo. Closed his eyes and held on tight. Yeah. Having the time of his life. And everyone that he went past said, Have you ever seen a turtle ever go so fast? Hey. But then somebody let go of that rope. Uh-oh. And he went back to being Slow Mo Joe. <laughs> But he found all these other ways to go fast and live life to the fullest. Like on the and all back that. of a dog and he, on a. He went on a dog that chased a car and. Jockey on a horse. All these different ways to go fast. Y'all car. are creative. <laughs> I mean, these songs are clever. Oh, it's so fun to write. What kind of brain y'all got? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Collectively. There's no rules. <laughs> so it'll limitless. How do you even dream that up? Oh, well, we just sit around and we, we write down at the beach a lot and we just get a lot of inspiration. We wrote all the songs actually down there, mm. which is why it's cool to get to tour down there. And, and the, uh, Where at the what beach in particular? Down 30A. We'll be based 30A. on 30A and Seaside, but we'll be doing shows all the way from Key West up through Tampa all the way over to, to uh, Louisiana. Okay. Yeah. But they're all on the coast and um, the cool thing about touring down there is we can kind of be in one area and all these families with children come to us. Cool. And so every week from Saturday to Saturday, thousands of people switch out, you know, and we don't, we're already down there. So they already are there and you guys are the entertainment for this beach town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's several mm -hmm. towns. Yeah. For so kids. All up and down. It's a family beach town. I yeah. Guess. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And there's yeah, some theater cool. groups that do family theater and things like that. Yeah. What a cool little, is it niche or niche? I never get that right. Niche. <laughs> what a cool little niche. It's a good little niche. <laughs> you know, it's funny too because it's the first time we've ever toured and played music in our lives where we were done at like 6.30. Yeah. Yeah. 
and cocktails. Yeah, I know. It's like, you want another juice box, honey? You want to call it a night? <laughs> and how fun that you guys are married and y'all do this together. Do y'all ever get tired of each other being married and spending all this time together? She never gets tired of me, I don't think so. <laughs> No. How could you? You're so charming, kid. Oh, my God. I never we, get tired we really of don't. We, we really don't. Oh, and we miss each other when we're gone for a night. Um, but, no, we have so much fun playing together. We cook together. Well, he cooks at night. Ken's a great yeah. cook, by the way. All healthy stuff. Always, like, organic. Yes. So good. Check out hillbillysupperclub.com. Hillbilly. Is that a blog? Mm -hmm. That's my food blog. Food blog. Hillbillysupperclub.com. And I'm going to vouch for that food because it is fantastic. I've <laughs> <laughs> eaten it many times. You had the pizza on the plantain crust. Oh, my gosh. He made pizza on the plantain crust. Where do you come up with this? Like, you're mine. I'm telling you. Y'all got some crazy, awesome minds going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had some... To find the really good recipes, you had to do some trial and error and have some not so good stuff to figure out how to make it right. But so is cooking a pleasure for you? Mm -hmm. It's like a second creative outlet. It's a, I love to cook. You do? Mm -hmm. he loves I, love, it. I to love to go to the farmer's market and look and see what they got. I love to go to the fish market and anywhere like that. He loves looking through cookbooks and deciding what he's going to make. And then he goes to the store and he comes home and he's all excited. He's chopping up things. And how great for you, Andy. You just get to eat it. Oh, a glass of wine. That's what, yeah, I just get to eat it. And Dude, then, I'm the same as you. Michael cooks every night. Oh, wonderful. I need to send him to your website, though, because I want us to start eating more healthy. Yeah, yeah. Ken cooks yeah, a lot of healthy stuff. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of your husband. Hey, thanks. He's a great he's guy a and super talented. Guys. Yes. Aww. We need to all get together. Uh, duh. It's okay. happening. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Anything else before we wrap? And I want to end well, with Leave Your Light, which is I want y'all to give me some inspiration. Oh. Because obviously the Fiddler Crab did, but I need it from y'all. But tell me anything else, like where people can find you guys, what to look for, and what they need to know. Well, we are just on huckandlily.com, and then... Spell that L-I-L-L-Y. Yes. Two L's in the lily. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can find Ken's music coming up on... He's got a song on Chris Jansen's record, and yes. Harry Connick Jr. What are the songs called? Uh, Harry Connick's is Every Time I Fall in Love, and Chris Jansen's is Back in My Drinking Days. Oh my gosh, two rock stars. Yeah. I love them. She's Harry. got a Brothers Osborne song that's out now that it just came out. You have the record. single? No, no, it's, it's out on, the on the record. What's the song called? It's called Heart Shaped Locket. You guys, y'all are just crushing. I just love those boys, and I wrote it with TJ and I love Lisa TJ. Carver. I love TJ and John. I love them both. Yeah. How does it feel to be so cool? We I mean, oh, just right. do all this cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys wake up every day and have to like grab the fiddler crab and pinch yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I just bought a minivan, so yeah. I'm like, I don't think of myself as that cool. <laughs> we need something to haul all of our huck and lily gear. <laughs> and you know, like Tim Tim McGraw says, you need to stay humble and kind. Yeah. Right. So sure. drive exactly. a minivan. Yeah. Exactly. Be, minivans are really practical. Hey, you know what? Oh yeah. I've gotten to that point too. I'm just like I'm driving along. I'm like, this is really comfortable. But it's far. <laughs> but it's funny because when I pick my son up in carpool at school, he's. He's like, Dad, do you think maybe we could pull around to the side and get me? Because I'm going to be coming out there. <laughs> I mean, to him, I might as well be picking him up in the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I was like, honey, I'm like, son, there are tons of minivans in the carpool line. He's like, yeah, but they're all moms. Yeah. And then there's Ken with his big beard and hair. <laughs> I mean, as a kid, minivans are like the worst. Yeah, yeah. Right? He's got a drop so down beautiful. DVD. We'll be traveling, and Andy will sit in the back and watch a movie and eat popcorn. And she'll be like, when are we going to get there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what has happened. Okay, so leave your light. Give me some inspiration. All right. Um, inspiration. Well, just follow your dreams. Follow your heart. I know it sounds so corny. No, but how do you do that? Like, um, how, what? Where do you get the courage to do that? You just know that. Where do you want to? Where do you see yourself in 30, 40 years from now? The Notebook. That's where I got that from, <laughs> and that that changed my life watching that movie because. Wow. He just said to her, where do you see yourself 30 years from now, 40 years from now? What, do you, what, are your, what's, what does your life look like? And, and I always think about that, like, will I be happy with what I did with my life? You know, so in, in a lot of it is a struggle, but um, there's more re rewards. So I think that you just got to do what you love. And if you hate your job and you get up going to work dreading it, you just got to quit doing that. And there's always other ways to make money and make a living and you can do it with something that you're passionate about. I think it inspires others. I, that one thing I think about a lot is that, you know, you can find yourself talking to somebody at the DMV or something like that, or you're in, you know, you're in a hurry or anything that any situation at any time that you find yourself in, God put there for a reason. And you're either going to see the opportunity you have or you're not. 
that. And you can either, you can talk to this complete stranger or whatever and find the joy. You have a moment, you'll never see him again, just have a moment of, you know, where you could talk about anything with this person or whatever it is and walk away from it and have a little, you know, it was fun, it was funny, it was just what it was for a little bit. But, or you can sit there and go, God, I gotta get out of here. So you're saying see the beauty in all the moments in your life, even the ones that aren't necessarily the pretty ones. Yeah, I mean, and it, I think um, I'm a, you know, I know that uh, we've talked about Jesus Calling before. I love Jesus Calling. And, uh, you know, if you, if you, re, I've been doing that for about a year, I guess I did the whole year, so recently I see a thread through there all the time that is, um, you know, that it's not going to always be good, and sometimes you're going to have things that you weren't planning for, or you're not expecting that are really hard, and I think that if, if it what if that if you didn't have to find out how that's supposed to help you in the big thing, mm -hmm. then there wouldn't be any such as a need for something like faith. There wouldn't even be any point in the word faith, because that's what faith is: is to you know see what I don't. This is not what I wanted, and this is not feel good. It hurts or whatever it is. But how is it going to help me um, make me stronger? You know what is God trying to do in my life? It's, it's, I'm just trying to grasp that more and learn that. I love that though, like, because it takes, I mean, I say this all the time, like, you have to have hot and cold, you have to have up and down, good and bad, like, sweet and sweet and salty, like, if mm -hmm. you don't know what it feels like to have some pain, I guess, as terrible as that is, mm -hmm. you don't know mm -hmm. the positive things, too, mm -hmm. and the painful things are actually some of the biggest growth, yeah. if you can bring God into let, them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they can, they can bury if you let them. Yeah. But, but if you, you know, it's one of the hardest prayers to pray is God break me and show me what you want. Oh, Instead of, know, right? But it's it's also easy to pray. It's, dear Lord, <laughs> I pray for your will, but if you ain't got time, I got some really good ideas I can run by you. <laughs> yeah, I, you want to, like, I'll be your consultant. Yeah. Let yeah. Me just, like, help Don't worry, God, I got this. <laughs> Never works that way. Yeah, no, it doesn't. He yeah. always seems to have time. But it always, it, it always works out. But I find that. Uh, if you do what you love, it'll always lead to something good. I agree with that. And if you're doing something that someone else wants you to do or that you think you should do, then it, it'll never work because you don't have your heart in it and you're not joyful about it. And you just follow yeah, your bliss. Well. Follow your bliss and it'll do good. Because that's your blueprint from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no one else knows that but you. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Ken and Andy, <laughs> slash Huck and Lily and Fiddler Crap, <laughs> he's taking a nap. Thank yeah, you all for dead. joining me, and this will be airing right after the episode of I Love Kelly Pickler, where you guys have your children's debut at the hospital and crap. So everyone, y'all awesome. go buy their album Yay. and check them out. Thanks, Kelly. You guys rule.